Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. I want to keep this train rolling with the sound design and show you what I did on the 808 in this breakdown. It's pretty cool stuff. Uh, what I actually did was a little bit crazy and pretty much relied on a preset, but I'm going to show you something that we can derive from it that's actually really practical and really useful in your mixing. So, let's jump on in. Now, you might be thinking, hey, that 808 sounds kind of plain. That's not that crazy at all. In fact, it kind of just sounds like a filtered sign in the back of all of this crazy glitchy noise. Except let me solo the 808 real quick. So remember a couple of days ago I mentioned that when you have a multi-effect kind of tool, it's really good to just kind of go through the presets and see what happens. Learning your tools, even if it's just going through presets, can be super useful because sound design stuff can be pretty complicated. I I'm going to show you what's going on here, but like, let me bypass it so we can hear what we started with. So this is, I, I know that I am an educator here online and I try to provide all of the answers, but this is pretty intense sound design stuff. I, this is not something I would be able to replicate by ear or even necessarily create from my imagination step by step. Uh, it's trance gates creating different rhythms. Those sounds that are created from the trance gates are being bit crushed and distorted and compressed. And there's a resonator giving it some note and a phaser and a comb filter and all sorts of crazy stuff. We've got a frequency shifter that we can automate up and yeah, there's a lot going on here. So the only thing that I modified on this, I, I believe I slightly changed some of the sequencing of one or more of these trance gates just to make the rhythm kind of fit with the other elements that were kind of acting percussively. But that's basically it, because there's limiters and formant filters and delays and all that kind of stuff. And there's not a lot that I can really teach from this except for, you know, learning the presets and maybe try taking some time to reverse engineer them. But now let me show you something else entirely. So I'm going to play the 808 in the context without that effect on, and then I'm going to throw on a different effect and see if you can hear what's happening. Here's the before. Okay, now listen close. Here's the after. Well, I'll make it easier for you. I'm going to solo this up. Here's our before. And here's our after. Kind of cool. So this is an exaggerated version of an effect that also has a very practical use. I'm going to give you the exaggerated version. This is more of like a sound design kind of transformative effect, but it can sound really cool. Like if, if I just went in that direction from the get-go in that breakdown area, I could probably do a couple of fun little tricks and maneuvers to spice things up and get something that's maybe not as exciting as the preset that I picked out, but something that still has some of that excitement and movement and interesting sound design going on, and the producer and the artist probably would have really loved it. All right, so what is happening here? So this is using triggered envelope shaping on a pitch shifter, right? And we kind of know that it's got to be something that's involving envelope and pitch shifting because we're hearing the tail of the 808 detune significantly, right? So we know if it's only happening in the tail, it's got to be something that's envelope dependent. And if it's 
detuning, it's got to involve a pitch shifter, right? So how do we set this up? So the basic formula is this. We put on a pitch shifter in multipass, and then we set up two different triggers. One is going to be an envelope. The envelope is going to tell what the pitch shifter is going to do once the triggering occurs. The other one is going to be an auto audio follower. The audio follower is kind of like a dynamic processor. It's something that is dependent on amplitude, kind of like a compressor. When signal exceeds a threshold, that's going to say, okay, now do something. So the way we do it, and I'll, uh, I'll delete all this stuff and I'll remake it real quick, actually. So first thing we're going to do is pull up our pitch shifter. And we're just going to leave it as is for now. Nothing else is going to happen. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to pull up our audio follower. Our audio follower is going to then link to an envelope. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to set the, en the audio follower to say, okay, when this triggers, it is going to trigger this envelope. So I'm going to click this little orange plus right over here, and then I'm going to click right under the attack or well, not the attack, but this little triangle that says, hey, okay, we're going over here now. I'm going to click this little equal sign. So this is saying audio follower equals envelope generator. All right, that is our starting maneuver. Now, from there, we are going to say, okay, well, what's the envelope shaper going to affect? The envelope shaper is going to affect the pitch shift. So I'm going to click this plus again, but this time I'm going to pop on over here and I'm going to drag this down until I get down to minus 12. And if it goes down to minus 12.1, okay, so be it. That means it's gonna go down an entire octave and then a tenth of another note. That's, it's probably fine based on what we're doing here. So that's our basic setup. Now what we have to do is we have to customize it. First, I'm going to turn the attack to zero. I'm going to turn the release to something that's going to be tempo dependent, which I figured out, not necessarily tempo dependent, but kind of matches the feel, which I found to be around 600 milliseconds. And the last part I have to do in the envelope is I have to tell it instead of going up, it needs to go down. Because right now, the way this is set up, once I get it to trigger, it's going to, well, you'll hear it. I'll, I'll show you what it does. We're getting the wrong effect. It's detuning because the envelope is saying, hey, do what this mix thing is telling this to do. So when I attack, it's going to cause the pitch to go down. So we have to actually inverse the envelope. And if you look here, you've got this little minus thing right here. That's going to invert the envelope. And now we get the effect that we're looking for. So a little complicated at first, but if you kind of think of the nuance of what everything is doing, it makes a lot of sense. It's saying, hey, our envelope shaper has got to control the pitch. This mix knob is going to say, hey, we're going to turn the pitch down. Unfortunately, this attack is saying, as soon as this envelope triggers, it's going to immediately start turning pitch down. We need to invert that effect. We need it to be happening in the release. So we need to invert it with this minus sign. Now this audio follower, that's going to be our control for the envelope. We use the gain to figure out where the envelope is going to hit. If I don't push the gain enough, we don't reach the threshold and the effect does not occur. Right? That sounds bad. It's, it's actually the effect is constantly there. Because of this minus sign, because we're inverted right now. So we need to get above our threshold. And then everything else is just timing controls. I think I'm going to switch this to peak, too. Uh, RMS was giving me a better... If we're really careful about our gain control and where we're hitting that threshold, we can really get like some inside little moves. You hear like a little tiny bit of this tune.
even on the shorter note. Now, will we ever use this as a practical effect? This is kind of like a sound design thing, right? So we wouldn't really normally use this in day-to-day -day mixing, right? Well, we can do a variation of it that actually can be very useful in our regular mixing. I find this works really, really well on trap records in particular, but anything that's 808 driven and has a kind of flat note 808, I find this can really help to give a little bit of movement, tension, and power to the low end. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of reverse the effect a little bit. We, we want to start from our pitch being down about minus 20 cents. And this time, instead of having it in negative mode, we're going to have this in positive mode, which means that the envelope now is going to do whatever we're telling the, the pitch control here to do. And we're going to have it go up. We're going to have it go up ever so slightly. So like plus 0.4%, which is gonna get it back up to the pitch of zero. It's gonna get us back to our starting pitch. So now what's happening is the audio follower is telling the envelope shaper to say as soon as level exceeds the threshold, instantaneously zero attack time, return the pitch to where it belongs. But once our signal drops below the threshold, that's when we're going to start dipping back into ever so slightly flat. And this is going to be much more subtle than what we just heard. We might even want to speed up the release a little bit so that we get back to that flatter note on the release a little bit sooner. Yeah, because then we get a little bit more of that detune on the inside notes as well. I find that this is really, really practical for creating tension, creating a sense of menace, and then because it's actually sliding a little bit flat, the note is actually getting lower, so it kind of has this like dropping off into something heavier type of feel to it. And if it's subtle enough like this, you don't necessarily hear it as detune exactly. It's more like you just kind of feel some movement to it. So if you're doing some kind of a trap record or something that's very 808 driven, I think that this is really worth experimenting with. All right, gonna wrap up here. If you dig this video, hit that like button. If you wanna catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification. Also, if you wanna support the channel, jump on over to the Weiss Advice Shop. There's a lot of great tutorials on everything from compression to reverb to tapping into the feel of a record Record, to sound design, low end, pitch correction and auto tune, a lot of great tutorials that I'd like you to check out. The link to that will be in the description below. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice, we are musicians, sound is our instrument, and I will catch you next time.